Well, if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, would you go to the book of James, please? We're going to start in a very familiar passage, James, the first chapter, and uh, I'm going to just read a little bit to you, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the God of the suddenly. Book of James. I'm going to start right at verse 1. James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know what a bondservant is? Can somebody tell me what a bondservant is? A bondservant is one who chooses to be a servant to someone else. There are times when in, in, in history where uh, the, sa- the slaves were set free. Some slaves remained. And, uh, and as a symbol of their choosing to stay with this master, they would pierce their ear with an awl, A-W-L, and wear an earring signifying their ownership. So when James says he's a bondservant, of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is talking about that he has given all to Jesus himself at his choosing because there's nowhere else he will ever be but with the Lord Jesus. He said, To the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all genu- gen- generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubt, for one who doubts is like the surf uh, of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Father, I ask, Lord, that you bring out those things that you want us to learn and grow and, and, and touch our hearts, Lord, that we would become more like you today. In Jesus' name. James sends this letter out, it says, to the 12 tribes. And he wants them all to know that he's a bond slave of Jesus Christ. That he has chosen to forsake everything else. To walk away from all that was to be indebted to the Lord Jesus with his whole life. He says a couple of things that are very important here. He says... Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Anybody ever been in a trial? No, really. Anybody ever been in a... Michael, I see. Michael's got a few fingers up. I understand, my brother. I understand. Count it all joy. Are you kidding me? Count it all joy when you have that bro- that boss that's uh, that's not a fair person. Count it all joy when your kid comes home oh, with less than a perfect report card. Count it all joy when when you have more month than you have money. Count it all joy. That's what he says. Count it joy. You know why? Because God is producing something in your heart in every trial. If you are in the midst of a difficulty right now, if you're in the midst of uh, of a situation that you just cannot control, praise God. You've controlled enough in your life. God wants to show you who's in control. Almighty God is in control. And he's producing something in your life. It says, knowing that the test, in verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Now understand that when he's talking about the testing of our faith, he's not talking just about you sitting around with your Bible. You understand that. Oh, I'm having a, testing my faith. I, uh, I don't know whether, uh, I, I don't know whether I should eat at McDonald's or Dunkin' Donuts. Neither. He's really talking about when you have a crisis of faith, 
We don't like to talk about that in churches. And I'm telling you, that's a terrible thing to not acknowledge that. All of us go through a crisis of faith once in a while. All of us face things and, and, and have doubts and not sure. We know what the teachings say. Um, Peyton, sweetie, could you sit down, please? I don't care where, but could you just take a seat, honey? I'm being distracted. <laughs> okay? So, so no matter what it is, we can have these trials of faith. We can have doubts. We can have fears that ex- exhibit itself in doubts. We can have all of these things. And we don't talk about them because we're supposed to be people of faith, so we're not supposed to have them. But we do. We all have doubts and fears. We all wonder, is this really true? This thing of Christianity, it sounds too good to be true. I'm, I'm so undeserving. You know, I've heard all of that. So, so still, James says that, that when we're going through the testing of our faith, it will produce endurance. You see, while we're being tested in our faith, we are still going for the long haul. We are not sprint runners in Christianity. We're marathon winners. We just don't, we just don't go by feelings or when things are going good. We're Christians. Oh no. You know, without a test, there's not a, yeah, you got it. So we're in it for the long haul. We're in it for times when we, we are challenged or with doubt or fear. We're in it when things don't go the way we think they're supposed to. We're in it when things are terrible and we can't even understand why we're in it. To finish the race. And so he says, the first thing he says is, these trials will produce endurance. You're going to need endurance. I have to tell you, if I knew what I had to face in my life during the course of my life, I would have never signed up. Because I, you know, anybody who's walked with the Lord for more than 10 minutes, you know that you've come in contact with people who think you're crazy, who don't believe what you believe, who tell you, you know, just forget it, uh, make fun of you, disregard you, discredit you. That, you know, I would have given you the job, but, you know, you're that born again thing. So we, if we've been a Christian for 10 minutes, we start to see that, that the enemy pushes on us, pushes us, tries to get us to renege our faith, tries to get us to look somewhere else, tries to water down our faith. But if we sustain ourselves, if we endure if our, with our faith and our walk, those trials, throughout our trials, if we endure and stand on our faith, It's going to produce endurance. Enough for today, enough for tomorrow, and as we stay close to the Lord, enough. Then he says this, knowing that the test, in verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result. Listen, we, we talk about endurance. You ever see those guys that run marathons? Anybody run a marathon here? You know, you watch these guys, they come into the, into the audit, uh, the big, uh, auditorium after they've been running 26, is it 26.5? 26 miles, anyway, around that, anyhow. And they're coming in, you know, and they're not looking good for the camera, I have to tell you. They are sweaty and stinky. They don't, they, they are, some of them are wobbling because their body is given everything it can. Endurance is hard. But it produces in us that ability to go on further and further. There's a, there's a wall of pain in a marathon run. I don't know if you knew that, but somewhere around the 11th and 12th mile, I think it is, where the runner, so they tell me, <laughs> where the runner has given it all for 11 or 12 miles. And there is this wall. They think they're going to die. They, they, they believe that this could be it. And there's a choice they have to make. And many don't make it. Many drop out. But those that make that choice to take one more step, to go one more foot, to go one more yard, to just do one more mile, I'm going to just do one more mile as they do this and, and, and conquer that one mile. There is, there is so much more uh, endurance that they have, and what it, and what it's, what James says is, 
uh, that that uh, let endurance have its perfect result, and you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. When they break through that wall of, of uh, pain, it's around, you know, as I said, it starts about 11, 11, uh, mile 11, and it goes to around 11, uh, about 15, uh, mile 15. If they can do those four or five miles and get through it, the pain is terrible. They're feeling cramps. They're sweating. They're throwing up some of them. There's, it's terrible. Why anybody would go any further, I don't know. <laughs> Yay, let's go run a marathon. What? But you see, if they can get through that wall of pain, and they will, then they know they will be able to make that 26th mile. That's our life. And there are times I want to just share with you this morning that, that there are times when that wall of pain hits us and throws us for a loop. Anybody ever had that? Walking around, feeling good, everything is cool, family's good, job's good, you know. I could always use a little more money, but we're doing good, okay. And then all of a sudden, boom, something happens. And you're laying on your back, <laughs> figuratively. Literally. Sometimes it happens so fast. You're a Christian, you pay your tithe, you come to church, you even teach Sunday school. Something happens. It's not supposed to be that, we think. I'm a Christian. I'm not supposed to have these things. The Lord knows I've given him everything. The Lord knows that I've, I've, uh, his, that my money is his money. The Lord knows that, that I'm here for him, that I, I would die for him. I don't understand. What does he want me to do it? <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. Thursday morning, I um, I woke up and uh, I was very excited for Joe because Joe was starting school Thursday morning. So, so you know, I put his little uh, his little bandana, his little red bandana. He looked so cute, so he would have loved it. Put his little bandana on, you know, and he knew we were going somewhere. It was so exciting, you know. He was all excited. So he got in the car and my top was down and and it was a beautiful morning. I got him to school and uh, he is he's like so good. I even even when I brought him in I said, "Sit, Joe, show off. Sit." So he sits like this, you know, he said and they take his leash. "Oh, what a good boy." Yes, he is. And he off to school he goes and uh, I'm feeling great. I, I'm really, I'm praising the Lord. I'm, the Lord's I, I, in my heart. It's a beautiful day. The top is down. Everything was right. And as I left the doggy daycare and I turned left into this road, which I wasn't really very familiar with. I'd been down it once or twice before. And the sun, I turned the corner and that eastern sun was in my face, full force. It had never been brighter. I had never experienced something so bright. And so I'm looking kind of to the side because I'm looking to the side of the road for to guide me and waiting for the stop sign, looking for the stop sign. And um, there was no stop sign at the end of the road. So I just kept going. And uh, the next thing I see is a wall, truck wall in front of my car. And I hit it full force. And um, to the point, my front of the car got caught under his tire. His tire was higher, bigger than my car. Caught the tire, and he dragged me. So I hit him this way, and then he dragged me this way. And... Uh, and I was sitting in the car with no top on the car, of course. And uh, and he stopped, the, the, the truck driver stopped as soon as he could. And then everything became surreal, even at the point of impact. I mean, um, it was just so fast. I, I didn't have time to yell Jesus, which I love to do when I'm in those kinds of situations. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> I couldn't yell. I couldn't do anything. The next minute, it was sort of like a scene from one of those airplane crash movies, you know. Uh, the car stops, and the truck stops, the car stops, and all of these people came running out of the buildings that were around. They had seen it and heard it. And 
And they're running and running towards me. I had gone forward and I hit my head, which I, really, thank God, I don't even have a bump. I have a little scratch, but no big deal. Uh, that's not true of my black and blues, though. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not going to show them. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, they all came running and some guys yelling. And I had a little, you know, blood here and there. And, and uh, some guys yelling, don't get out of the car, lady. Don't get out of the car. And I thought, well, I, and I was really kind of, Still dealing with it all, and uh, but I was feeling my I my hands are good, my head's attached. That's always a good thing, you know. My legs are moving my legs. My airbags did not employ. They did not employ. Don't forget, my cars are 2007. They're probably some mouse probably is living in my airbags. I don't know. They didn't. They didn't. And maybe the way the hit because he he dragged my car. Maybe I don't know. They didn't go off. But um, the next thing, all these people are around, and um, you know how well I listen to people. I opened up my car door. I wanted to get out. And so um, I got out, and all over the, the road is my car. <laughs> so at that moment, uh, two fire trucks and three police cars and an ambulance, they all came. And um, so I reached down, and, you know, the police officer said, were you the driver? I, I, he said, were you the driver? And I said, yes, I am. And so I said, just a minute. I reached out and I picked up my headlight on the ground. <laughs> and I went, this was on my car two seconds ago. You know, the EMT comes over and he says, uh, hi. <laughs> Come here, we want to talk to you. <laughs> And I said, this was on my car a couple of minutes ago. She said, you could put it down. <laughs> so I put it down. She goes, and she took me by the arm. It was so funny. <laughs> Come with us, you know. <laughs> okay. So I go over to the ambulance, and they're checking me out and everything. And and um, and she, texts, she checks my blood pressure. You know, she's got the cuff on and. And she said, are you on blood pressure medication? I said, no. She said, oh, are you on heart medication? I said, no. She said, "Um, no blood thinners? I said, no. She said, well, your blood pressure's high. I said, I hit a dump truck. (laughs) (laughs) And the police officer was standing there, and he started to laugh. I went, tell her I hit the dump truck. So he had more questions, and so I just said, please, i got to go. i got to talk to the police officer. So anyway, I got out. And then they had to tow the car. And then it was just, you know, if you've ever been in an accident, you, you know how it all goes. They wouldn't let me drive the car, or try to drive the car even. I don't think I could have driven it. There were my headlight and everything else was on the ground. And um, But uh, the police officer called my brother Jerry and... He called my brother Bob, and uh, you know the Italian thing. It just is crazy. So just, but um, my point, point in all of this was that I wasn't really hurt, really badly. Thank God, right? I mean, um, thank God. I mean, you know, I walked away from. I should have been dead. What? That same day, someone just did die. That same day. That's right. Same town. Someone did die. You're going to make me cry, Susie. <laughs> We did. We had a fatality in Southington. They closed down 84. I was just a mile away from that. People kept saying, were you in that accident? No, I was in the lesser of the accidents. I was right down over there. My point is, I was doing everything right. I'm a very careful driver. Right, Nellie? Yes. Oh, good. There. <laughs> I, I don't make mistakes. What's that? That I'm a good driver? Yes, I'm a good driver. <laughs> not, a, <laughs> not a slow driver. But anyway, my point is I was doing everything right. And this happened. I had my morning devotions. I loved the Lord. I was even singing songs to Joe as we were going there. I was so grateful that the Lord had me drop off Joe before this accident. He would have died. He would have gone right up over the top. I know we would have. Um, And I should have been dead. The cop said, I can't believe you're standing. I go, well, why? He goes, look at your car. 
I go, yeah, isn't God good? Isn't God good? He goes, I don't know, but I think so, because you're still walking around. He said, something's wrong. You should go to the hospital. There's something wrong. This is just, he he kept trying to get me to think that maybe there was some sort of internal injuries. But I I knew I was all right. I had the bump. I had the, you know, where the, the, I don't know even what it did, what hit me. But I want you to know that in the midst of that, their questions arise. God, was I disobedient? God, were you trying to tell me something? God, am I still your child? Why would you let this happen to me? Why did this happen? I really love that card, Lord. Why did this happen? And I got nothing. I got nothing. So we should go home now, right? No, I want to tell you, the Lord brought me to James and he brought me to Somewhere else, too. Let's go. Um, let's go to Romans 12, shall we? And I'm going to start in verse 9. Romans 12, 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Is God good? Is God good even when you're in trouble? Is God good even when something happens that we don't understand? Is God good when something is taken away from us we think too soon? Is God still good? God is good. Cher, your, 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 your choice for worship today was wonderful. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. He says this. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in in, uh, uh, diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. No matter what the circumstances are, we're called to be fervent in love and in serving the Lord. In the middle of that, as I'm picking up my headlight, going, no, I'm saying, okay, I didn't get hit that hard, you know, I'm okay, you know. God is still good, and he has me, and he protected me. And if he didn't protect me, he'd still have been good. Do you understand what I'm saying? No matter what, God is good. He says this, verse 12. Let me just lead into verse 12. Verse 11 says, Not lagging behind in diligent, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope. Hope springs inside of us no matter what the situation is, no matter who's taken from us, no matter what fails, no matter where we are, there is still in each heart of the believer a seed of hope. That hope springs forth. We rejoice in that hope. Persevering in tribulation, persevering in tribulation, persevering in tribulation, even at the wall of pain, we persevere in that tribulation and devoted in prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints and practicing hospitality. Listen, we persevere even if we don't understand why. We persevere even though it doesn't go the way we expect it. We persevere. Why? Because we're bond servants of the Lord. And wherever he is, I am. Wherever he goes, I'm going. Wherever he leads me, I'm following. We need to remember that nothing can sidetrack us. Nothing can derail us. We study, some of you guys are in school, you study and study and mess up on something. God is still with you. I don't know why. God is still with you. Sometimes we have we have our hopes and 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 so excited about a job or or a, a position and we work hard to get it. We get the position. We we're so excited and then, boom! The company goes out of business or the, somebody else is promoted over us or whatever. That doesn't make any difference. We persevere in our hope, rejoicing in that every day because what happens, it's building that endurance, builds our faith to the next level with Christ. 
I, I want to tell you, I, I, I went through it, you know, uh, uh, Thursday, I was, I was like in a fog, kind of like, why? Why? I don't get it. Why? Out of, just out of the blue, something like that happens. It doesn't make any difference. Put it away. Because this gray matter of mine is never going to understand it anyway. You know, and God doesn't answer to me. I'm a bond slave of the Lord. I just serve him. He saved me. He stood between my car and that big hunk of a truck. He stood there. The the police officer said to me, what happened? I said, I hit the truck. He said, oh, did you not see him? I looked at him. I said, do you see the size of that truck? I said, no, I didn't see him. I said, the sun was in my eyes. I said, and I, I just hit him. And he said, wow, nobody ever says, tells the truth. He said, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> nobody ever tells us the truth. And I laughed and I said, listen, that's exactly what happened. The sun was in my eyes. I was looking for the stop sign. No stop sign. I went into traffic. And he said, uh, that's all right. What's your insurance number? And I went, I don't know. And I didn't have an insurance card in my car. Do you know the police officer called Allstate to get the to get the insurance number. And I got to tell you, while I was dialing, I was going, did I pay that premium? I hope I paid that premium, <laughs> right? Come on, wouldn't we all be doing that? Well, did, did I remember to pay it? I, I think I did. I think I did. You know, I didn't get any letters lately. I think I, it's all set. And uh, when it was done and the tow truck was there, they wanted to take me to the hospital. I wasn't going to go. I felt fine. I knew the Lord was with me. Um, and... Uh, I had to get in that big old tow truck, you know, and you put my car in the tow truck and pieces are still falling off, you know. And and the police officer says, that was a nice car. I went, I know. <laughs> God is still with me. By the time sat, Friday was difficult for me. It was painful. I was sore. My neck, you know, all of that stuff hits you the next day. Saturday by Saturday, I'd worked it through. I'd prayed through it. I, I, I thank God for being with me. We, sing that, we sang that song this morning, God is on the move in a mighty way. Listen, things like that don't happen unless God is on the move because the test is in my heart. How do you handle this? How do you accept things that you can't control? How do you turn it into a praise? How do you turn it into worship? One more scripture and then I'll let you go. It's, let's go to Romans 5. Let's go back a few few chapters to Romans 5. I'm going to start right at the begin, beginning of 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In, as, as I'm looking at this truck three feet from my face, and then all of a sudden being pushed to, the, to, the, to my left. There was a peace that was over me. I can't explain it to you. I can't, I don't understand it myself. But a peace was over me. It was like I was watching a movie. Verse 2. Through whom we also have obtained our introduction by faith into, his, into this grace, which we stand and we exalt in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulation, knowing that the tribulation brings about perseverance. There it is. And perseverance, proven character. Our perseverance brings about character. Whose character? God's character in us. We endure and endure and endure. And what happens? God is forming character in us. That's why we can say, thank you, Jesus, when stuff happens. Because he's creating character within us. And our perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So what is going on? 
God, yes, these things are going to happen to us. Those suddenly things that we're not prepared for. When we get called into the boss's office and says, I got to let you go. When something else happens that's a disappointment or something that would be anger, breed anger in us. Well, what it's doing, it's producing character. And character is producing hope. And hope produces faith to get us through the next level with our Lord Jesus Christ. The next the next triumph is just around the corner. The next joy is right around the bend. I'm telling you, I know why I'm standing here today. I'm standing here to say hi. <laughs> I'm standing here to tell you how much I love you. I'm standing here to let you know that when we go through things, it's not for nothing, but it's for something. It's producing in us that added faith for the next day. Turn it all joy. Turn it to the Lord and let it all be joy in our lives. And know that God loves us and has never left us. Amen. 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 God bless you. Father, right now we just come to you as the body of Christ, Lord. This Christ Community Church, Lord, we love you. We declare our love for you, Lord. We declare your grace in our lives. We declare that you give grace for us every day in the amount that we need for us to get through our lives. Father, we thank you, Lord. And we love one another, Lord, with a, with a great love. Father, thank you. Thank you for my life, Lord. Thank you for this day. And Lord, tomorrow the insurance company looks at the car. <laughs> Lord, I love that car. <laughs> but whatever you want, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.